Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Ruby and in today's class we are going to explore one of the most important theories of intelligence by the famous psychologist Robert Stenberg. Stenberg's ideas are especially interesting because he doesn't look at intelligence as something you measure with a test, but he focuses on how we actually use intelligence in our daily lives, in schools, at work, and even when we are doing everyday tasks like cooking. So here is what we are going to learn and understand now in most simple explanation. We will begin by learning about who Robert Stenberg is and what he has contributed to the field of psychology. Then we will explore his information processing theory, which gives us a detailed look at how we solve problems step by steps. After that, we will dive into his most famous concept, the triarchic theory of intelligence, which is a comprehensive theory that breaks intelligence into three areas. We will look those in detail and talk about how these types of intelligence work together. Finally, we will wrap up by discussing how all this applies to education. Because understanding intelligence doesn't just matter in theory, it impacts how we learn and how teachers can help students like you succeed. So if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, subscribe now as we will be covering more topics on education subject. We are also posting daily MCQs for you to solve, which you can find in the short section. Remember to press the bell icon so that you get the videos on time. So who is Robert Stanberg? And why are we talking about him today? Well, Robert Stanberg was born in 1949 and is a world-renowned American psychologist who has completely changed how we think about intelligence, creativity and problem solving. He is a pioneer in the field with more than 1,500 scientific papers and over 60 books published on these topics. Here are some important things to know about him. Stenberg is not only a theorist, but has also held some pretty impressive positions in his career. He was once the president of American Psychological Association, which is one of the most prestigious positions a psychologist can hold. It's kind of like being the captain of the national psychology team. He has also served as the Dean of Arts and Science at Tufts University and later the Provost of Oklahoma State University. These roles gave him insight into how intelligence and creativity play out in real-world educational settings. One thing that makes Stenberg's work stand out is his personal experience. He did not do well on traditional IQ tests as a child, which motivated him to understand why intelligence is more than just getting a high score on a test. His research has focused on the fact that intelligence is multidimensional. There isn't just one way to be smart. This leads us to the theories we will explore today. Stenberg is also a huge advocate for practical application of intelligence meaning that he thinks intelligence should help us in the real world, not just in academic setting. He has won numerous awards, including the Gromeyer Award in Psychology, which is one of the most prestigious awards in his field, recognizing the impacts of his ideas. So as you can see, Robert Stenberg has been highly influential in how we think about intelligence, not just as students, but in life in general. Now that we know who Stenberg is, let's dive in into one of his key ideas, the information processing theory. This theory explains how we process information step by step when we solve problems. And it's something you are doing all the time, whether you realize it or not. To make this clear, let us take an example we all understand, cooking. Imagine that you are preparing a meal for dinner. According to Stenberg's information processing theory, your brain goes through a series of steps, much like following a recipe. Here is how it works. Encoding. First, you look at the recipe and your brain identifies the important information. 
This means you are reading the ingredients, the cooking time and the method. So your brain is encoding or taking in the information. Next, inferring. So here you infer what you need to do. When the recipe says saute the onion, for example, you know from past experience that you need to cook them until they are soft and slightly brown. Next is mapping. Now here you compare the recipe to others you have cooked before. Maybe you have cooked a similar dish or your brain is mapping this experience onto your past experiences with cooking. Next, application. This is where you actually follow the recipe. You saute the onion, mix in the ingredients and follow each step to prepare the meal. Next is justifying. Once the meal is cooked, you taste it. Is it good? Does it need more salt? At this point, you justify whether you have done it correctly. Finally, you serve the meal, which is the response to the entire cooking process. This step-by-step -step approach helps us solve problems by breaking them down into manageable parts, whether it's cooking dinner or tackling a complex problem. It's a way of understanding how our brains are always processing information even in daily situations. Now, let us talk about Sternberg's triarchic theory of intelligence, which is probably his most well-known idea. This theory is called triarchic because it divides intelligence into three parts or types. But before we get into the details of each type, I want to give you an overview of why Sternberg developed this theory. Most of us are familiar with the idea that Intelligence is something you measure with an IQ test, right? But Sternberg thought that was too narrow. He noticed that many people who were great in academics were not always successful in real life. Likewise, some people who struggled in school went on to be very successful in their careers. So Sternberg asked, what is missing from the traditional view of intelligence? He believed that Intelligence is more than just answering questions on a test. It's about adapting to the world, learning from experiences, and knowing how to handle different kinds of situations. This triarchic theory proposes that there are three kinds of intelligence that work together. The first type is the kind of intelligence we typically think of solving problems in academic or logical ways. Sternberg called this analytical intelligence. But there is also a second type of intelligence, the ability to come up with new creative solution to problems. He called this creative intelligence. And the third type is what Sternberg called practical intelligence. This is all about using your skills and knowledge in real life, everyday situations, what we often call street smarts. So in a way, Sternberg's triarchic theory connects back to the information processing theory. When you use analytical intelligence, you are following steps similar to the information processing stages like encoding, mapping, and applying knowledge. But now, Sternberg is broadening the idea of intelligence by adding creative and practical dimensions. Many students used to get confused when they read about Sternberg's theory. They wonder if these theories, the triarchy theory and the information processing theory, are two different theories, are they related or are they similar? Let me make it simple for you. The information processing theory helps explain how we process information to solve problems. And the triarchic theory tells us that we solve problems in different ways depending on the types of intelligence we are using. So do not get confused anymore. They are two different theories but are connected and focused on different aspects of how we think. Let us now understand these three types of intelligence in more detail, starting with analytical intelligence which is also called Componential Intelligence. So this type is what most of us are familiar with. 
is the kind of intelligence that help you solve academic problems like figuring out math problems, writing essays, or analyzing literature. It's all about logic and following steps to reach a solution. In terms of brain work, analytical intelligence involves three main components. Meta components. These are the strategies we use to plan, monitor, and evaluate problem solving. For example, when you decide how you are going to approach a problem, you are using meta components. Next, performance components. These are the mental operations you actually use to carry out the problem solving process. For example, the specific steps you follow to solve a math equation. Next is the knowledge acquisition components. This is about how well you can acquire and organize new information. For example, how easily you can learn new facts and concepts and use them in different contexts. Now, coming to the creative intelligence, which is also called the experiential intelligence. Creative intelligence is all about being able to think outside the box. It's your ability to deal with new and unfamiliar situations and come up with innovative solutions. Imagine you are making a dish, but realize halfway through that you're missing a key ingredient. If you come up with a substitute or change the recipe on the fly, that's your creative intelligence in action. It's specially useful when you face situation that you have never encountered before. When you adapt to new challenge, you are tapping into your creative intelligence. Next is the practical intelligence, which is also known as the contextual intelligence. So this type is all about street smarts or knowing how to handle everyday tasks. It's your ability to apply what you have learned to the real world. For example, imagine you're trying to manage your time during a busy school day. You have to figure out how to balance your homework, classes, and after-school activities. That's practical intelligence, using common sense and real-world problem solving. Practical intelligence does not just mean doing things in the best way possible. It also means knowing how to adapt to your environment and work with people. In many ways, it's the intelligence we use most often in our daily lives. Now, finally, let's talk about educational implications. Point number one, different kinds of learners. Sternberg's theory tells us that students have different strengths. Some might be more analytical, some more creative, and others more practical. Teachers need to recognize these differences to help students excel in all areas. Next, diversified teaching methods. In light of this, teachers should use varied instructional strategies. They cannot just focus on analytical skills. They also need to incorporate creative and practical learning opportunities, like projects or real-world problem-solving tasks. Point number three, developing all three intelligences. Education should focus on helping students build all three kinds of intelligence. This means teaching students to think critically, analytical, creatively solving problems, which is creative, and apply knowledge to everyday life, which is practical. Point number four, assessment. Traditional tests might only measure analytical intelligence. But to get a full picture of students' abilities, assessment should include projects, presentations, and real-world tasks that evaluate creative and practical intelligence too. Next, encouraging creative thinking. Teachers can use creative exercises to encourage students to think outside the box. For example, they could ask students to come up with multiple solutions to a problem instead of just one. Point number six, real world applications. Finally, educators should give students opportunities to apply their learning 
to real world problems. This could be through internships, hands on projects, or case studies. When students understand how their knowledge applies to real life, it boosts their practical intelligence and makes learning more meaningful. So that was all on today's class on Stenberg's theories of intelligence. I hope you liked the video. Please let me know in the comment section and also any topic on education subject that you would want me to cover for the upcoming classes. Thank you for watching and see you in the next class.